Uh, hey everyone, just have a short lecture here uh, on compassion fatigue to go along with uh, the uh, material for, uh, for week six. So uh, compassion fatigue is also known as uh, burnout, secondary traumatic stress, uh, vicarious traumatization or vicarious trauma, secondary traumatization, that kind of thing. It's probably all referring to the same uh, construct that will, uh, symptoms of which we'll talk about here in a second. Um, but it's interesting to note that uh, uh, trauma is one of the only psychological problems that it evokes its symptoms in the helper. Um, so it, it's there's sort of a contagion or this sort of germ effect. Um, you know, uh, broken limbs don't necessarily uh, transfer from you know a patient to a to a, a, a doctor, or a physician, or a nurse, or something like that. Um, but um, but some sicknesses do, and, and we actually take some some precautions to make sure that uh, you know patients don't necessarily pass things to others, or or vice versa, that that you know helpers don't necessarily pass things on to uh, to patients. Um, and even in in the mental health world, uh, symptoms of depression, of of anxiety, of alcohol use disorder, of borderline personality disorder, of bipolar, none of these things evoke uh, you know or, or, or sort of cross that clinician uh, client boundary. Uh, trauma is, is sort of the only, um, and the consequences of trauma are sort of the only, it's one of the only psychological problems that, that sort of cross, crosses that, uh, that client clinician um, uh, boundary it, to the point where we start to see trauma symptoms um, present in, in, uh, in, in clinicians. And frankly, it's it's shockingly uh, prevalent. So, just about forty percent of social workers currently report burnout. This is a, a fairly old study now, but but uh, this is this is from Brown in two thousand and eight. But as far as I'm aware, it hasn't really changed all that much. Uh, in that same study, Brown also found that uh, seventy five percent of social workers reported burnout at some point in their career. Um, so there is an ebb and a flow to it, but. You know, more more than a third, but less than half of social workers are sort of currently burnt out, uh, and then about three quarters have have uh, considered leaving leaving their jobs at some point. That's from uh, Maslick's uh, 2003 study, uh, and then we know that burnout is highest among social workers. It's it's higher in social workers than it is among uh, other helping professionals, even other peer uh, professionals. So. Um, McCann and Perlman really identified um, this idea of vicarious trauma back in 1990. They, they put uh, sort of a, a definition to it, and that's the one I've got here. So it's really the process through which a therapist's inner experience and inner dialogue is negatively transformed, um, and, and it's transformed because of that empathic engagement with a, with a client's uh, trauma material. Um, it doesn't happen the first time, but it happens after sort of repeated and ongoing exposure to a client's trauma material. Uh, so here are the symptoms uh, that we should talk about. Uh, hypervigilance, uh, suspicions of the behavior and motives of others, um, difficulty sleeping, uh, nightmares, um, anxiety, numbness, um, uh, anhedonia, which is really a, a decreased ability to experience pleasure. So things that, that once um, felt, uh, you know, used to, used to be sort of uh, uh, associated with pleasure, no longer bring pleasure. So, you know, maybe a favorite meal isn't, you know, doesn't taste as good. Um, relaxing and, and watching a movie or something like that isn't as, isn't as refreshing and restorative as it used to be. Um, you know, taking a walk isn't as, isn't as relaxing and energizing as it used to be. Uh, and then a shorter time to uh, becoming angry is also a sort of classic symptom of, of compassion fatigue, and that's otherwise known as irritability. Now, the important thing is with you know with uh, with a lot of the things in the domain of mental health, you know, a short period, a uh, you know a, a day or two or something like that of of uh, any one of these symptoms probably isn't a big deal, but it's when these things start to accumulate over time, and it's especially um, especially a cause for alarm when uh, symptoms start to interfere with a person, person's professional effectiveness. That's when things, uh, that's when, when one should really start to, to grow uh, concerned. So there's lots of things that sort of exacerbate vicarious trauma, not only bearing witness to trauma, but feelings of powerlessness, um, 
especially on the part of the clinician, this, this, uh, you know, forgetting that, that we're supposed to support people through a healing process and, and focusing instead on trying to fix clients. Um, the other, and two other things, and I'm going to take these last two things out of order here for a second, but the recognition that trauma is linked to a larger sort of socio-political power imbalance, which actually has been a big argument of this course uh, from, from earlier in the semester, that sort of contributes to, to vicarious trauma as well. And that really uh, sort of echoes the powerlessness uh, bullet point that I, that I have up there as well. It's also very common among helping professionals to believe that self-care is, is far less important than the care we provide others. And there's literally dozens and dozens of metaphors out there. Like you, you can't fill the tanks of others if you don't fill your own tank. You know, you can't care for others if you don't care for yourself. Um, and, and those are all, I mean, they're all, they're all sort of um, uh, drawing uh, our attention to the fact that it's it's there's sort of this common cultural characteristic among all of us uh, in the helping profession that that our own self care is is uh, of less importance than the the care that we provide to others um, that selflessness is sort of what attracts us to the field but it's also uh, one of the things that contribute uh, can contribute to our ineffectiveness and ultimately our our departure from the field. So uh, about 10 years ago, um, uh, Judith Pearson came up with this idea of, of the ABCs of addressing vicarious trauma. It's a very simple model. I suspect that's why she chose uh, ABC. So A stands for awareness, and it's awareness of our own needs, our own limits, our own emotions, uh, and our own resources. Uh, balance is what the B stands for, and what she meant by that was there's a balance between one's personal life and one's work life. And then connection is what the C stands for, and uh, connection to self, to others, to family, to friends, to something larger, uh, you know, some kind of spirituality. Uh, that, that's what she was referring to with uh, with connection. So ABCs: awareness, balance, and connection. A simple model, but actually, um, if you sort of attend to it mindfully, a, a way to to um, to ameliorate the the effects of vicarious trauma. And then lastly, we know that. Uh, Clinicians can benefit from trauma-informed supervision as well. So when clinicians feel safe in supervision, um, they're, they're likely to disclose feelings of burnout, which will help with uh, that ABC process we, we discussed a second ago. When there's collaboration between a supervisor uh, and, uh, and a clinician, there's that, that'll decrease the feelings of, of powerlessness. Um, trustworthiness. Um, between a, an agency and a clinician, uh, make sure that uh, that roles and responsibilities and boundaries are respected. And that links very closely to what I've written here with with choice, and that's that time off is respected, encouraged, valued. It should say valued, not values. Valued by by the by the organizational culture. Um, and lastly, um, uh, when when clinicians feel empowered, um, they know that their work is valued by. Um, by by their agency supervision and uh, and uh, and management, and that's sort of the uh, the 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 benefits of of um, to clinicians of, of trauma informed supervision. Um, so, a short lecture for this week, but I hope it's helped to uh, clarify some of the readings. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to get in touch.